If you feel like you need to drink coffee every day just to be in a better mood or you're just grumpy because you have to go into the office, this is the secret happy pill that is sitting in your garage. Hi, it's your noodle on a motorcycle. The reason that I decided to do 21 days of commuting, when I first started riding, I used to ride every weekend. Like every Sunday, I was up in the mountains. And uh, that was four years ago. And lately, that's just been harder and harder to dedicate like a whole day of just like to fun. And I also just recently raised my bike back to stock height. And I noticed that some, a lot of people I knew that either started around the same time as I did or started riding shortly after I did, who commuted, just learned so fast. I saw someone comment on um, an interview I had with Dan Dan the Fireman. They commented on his, like, uh, it's a, on his After the Ride podcast, but it, he has, like, the YouTube videos for it, too. They had commented on mine. I used to watch Doodle on a Motorcycle but she had such a slow learning curve. And it was true. I just needed to ride more. There's just something so graceful that I've noticed about people who commute on their bike. They're just so, they just seem so like comfortable on their bikes. And, um, and especially I noticed that people who uh, weren't flat footing their bikes and commuted, they did not drop their bikes as much as I did. Also, I didn't think that I would like commuting. So I told myself I had to do it for at least 21 days. And then after that, I could decide whether or not I wanted to keep doing it. In four years of riding, uh, I had never commuted before. Since I was so used to riding in the mountains, that was my favorite place to ride. Commuting did not sound like it would be fun. My route to work was pretty boring, like not curvy. And just when I first moved to Atlanta, it was a, uh, a lot with traffic. So a lot of stop and go. Uh, and I'm like, this is not going to be a fun ride. Um, and on top of that, I, I carry so much stuff. And then also with Georgia, like in the spring and the fall, the morning and evening temperatures are like two entirely different seasons. I was like, how am I going to dress for that? plus work. It's like three outfits in one day. Um, but now I work um, somewhere where most of my commute is pretty much against traffic. And now I work in the department of all girls, very girly girls. I was really expecting my coworkers might be really judgmental. And I was also kind of worried I would just come off as unprofessional. Like I would come off like a hooligan or something because I've seen one other bike in my parking lot at work before. I think that's a, a man who works in the warehouse. But then I just thought about like the other riders I knew that had been commuting to work and how good they were at riding and how like fast they learned. And then just watching some people online like My Shell and Her Two Wheels and Megan Captine. These are all girls who commute, but also like, like look professional, look good, look cute. So I meant to start commuting back in March when I first announced that I was going to do this, when I raised my bike back to stock height, but then quarantine happened. So I put that on hold. Someone had mentioned that I should do my commute anyways during quarantine, but in the middle of a pandemic when the hospitals were overflowing was the last time I wanted to end up happen to be in an accident. So during quarantine, I pretty much just stuck to parking lot practice, which was really helpful because I was getting used to my bike back to stock height. So putting one foot down instead of both feet down because one foot down is so much more stable. It was only a month of quarantine after the governor here in Georgia lifted the work from home order. A lot of places I know are still having people work from home, most people actually that I know, but my office is just kind of old school. So as, uh, as soon as that was listed, we were back in the office. So I had a lot of rules. I didn't do 21 days straight because I was still trying to be safe. I wouldn't ride if it was rainy, which I did end up bending later. Uh, I wouldn't ride if I was really tired or if I was in a rush or if I had a lot of recycling to carry. 
Some other things happened that had me put it on hold too. When we moved to a new house, which I'm sitting in right now, and then when I was converting my condo to a rental property, and then also when my bike was in the shop. Actually, as I'm recording this, my bike is still in the shop. Probably by the time this goes live, I'll have it back. That's why I have this KTM. Somebody on Instagram lent me his brand new KTM. So I was able to, to keep riding to work, thanks to him. So the way I started out was with a huge backpack. I had saddlebags, but they got stolen back at my condo. So I was using my backpack. First, I had it really packed and my back hurt for days. But I slowly lightened the load. Like I just started carrying less stuff instead of carrying my water to work because I'm a hippie and I want to use my Berkey filter water from home. Um, I just drank the wa water at work and I left a pair of shoes and pants behind at work and I pretty much just wore the same shoes and pants all week like a guy. Even after day one and my back was hurting so badly, I was hooked. American Legion rider ended up sending me some saddlebags, which was a godsend to deal with the very cold mornings and very hot ride home. I had a heated vest and heated gloves, which was great because it used to be that the coldest I could ride in was like 55, but with those two things, I could ride as low as like 40. By the way, any bike related thing I use that you see in this video is linked down below as an affiliate link and any video or other person or whatever I talk about is gonna be linked down below too. Once it got to be about June, um, there was rain forecasted every day. Like there would be some weeks when it said literally rain every day. And pretty much with the summer, it's kind of, it seems to be the same thing. I never paid this much attention to the weather until I started commuting to work. But I would notice that it wouldn't rain in the morning. It'd be bright and sunny in the morning. And then it would say that there would be scattered storms from 4 to 7 p.m., 30 to 40%. And after about one or two times of driving home in sunny dryness, uh, I stopped listening to the weather. And I realized that whenever it says that, it's scattered really means like everywhere, here, here, and there. And you can really ride around it or even wait it out. And there was only once or twice that by doing that, I was um, stuck at work or I got stuck in the rain for just a little bit, maybe like five or 10 minutes. That's the nice thing about summer showers is they're really heavy, but they come and go fast, which was kind of nice because sometimes I would be wet on a hot ride, but by the time I got home, me and the bike was dry, which was really nice because I did not want to get anything rusted on this brand new KTM. Just an FYI, my commute before I moved was uh, about 11 miles and 20 minutes there and back, mostly highway, all opposite direction of traffic. In my car, that was just right, but on my bike, it felt too short. My commute after moving is now about 20 miles and 30 minutes. Still mostly highway and still mostly pretty much all against traffic, which it feels too long in my car, but just perfect on my bike. One funny thing I noticed too is that my driving style used to influence my riding style and now it's the other way around. What I mean by that is I have a Honda Fit. This, this is it right here. And you can press a button so that it's like in eco mode and it'll drive slower. The, the AC I think probably doesn't work as well, but just to like save on gas. And it also lights up, the dash lights up in green whenever you're driving slower, or accelerating slower and just being more fuel efficient. So I already drive like a grandma and that helps me do so even more. And that's kind of how I was on my bike too. But on a bike, there is no green dash saying I'm driving fuel efficiently. Instead, I just want to zip past all the cars merging on the highway so slowly. And I started doing that when I was driving. Another thing I was, I wanted to make sure I took care of was the safety of my bike at work. So I work in a, like a really sketchy part of Atlanta. I would not live there. I did for like three months and I broke my lease. I'm trying to think what I, did with my bike when I when I lived in there. I don't I don't remember. I think I left it at my boyfriend's condo because it was gated. I don't remember. But anyways, I was especially worried when I had a borrowed bike how I was going to keep it safe. So what I did was 
I would park my bike all the way in the back of the parking lot so only the people who, who worked there would see it. Nobody just driving by would see it. And I also kept a disc lock brake on it, would also lock the handlebars, and I got a GPS tracker that would alert me if anyone moved it. It's actually really sensitive. It, it actually went off one time when I had just removed my seat. Like I didn't even move my bike, I just took the seat off. And I also put a cover on it, not on my bike, because my bike's old, I've beat it up pretty hard over the years. Um, but on the KTM, I did cover that if it wasn't windy in the middle of the day when it was raining. Mark, the owner of the bike, did tell me I didn't have to do that, that because I, I was being really anal with this bike. I wanted to give it back in as good condition as I got it, but I, I still did that. So my concern that people were going to be judgmental, nobody was judgmental, at least not to my face. But it actually seemed like my coworkers thought it was cool. They asked a lot of questions. One girl asked if I could give her a ride in the parking lot, which I said no, <laughs> because I didn't want to drop her. I, so I told her I'd see if Cody would let me practice with him first. And uh, my CFO that called me antisocial before instead started calling me Evil Knievel, which he doesn't know that I don't know how to wheelie, so we don't need to tell him. News traveled fast that the lone motorcycle in the parking lot belonged to a girl in the art department. And as far as being worried that I was coming off unprofessional, I don't think that was a problem at all. Especially because at work I, I really try to just do my best that I can at work. I mean, I wear noise-canceling headphones all day because I want to concentrate. And I'm usually one of the first to come in and one of the first to leave. Not the first, but one of the first few out of 30. Um, and when I was riding in, I, I just made it a point to come even earlier and leave even later. Earlier so that I had time to change. Later, just because at first I, w I didn't want anyone, I was still trying to kind of hide that I came in on a bike, so I was trying to minimize how many people saw me. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that anymore. Oh, sorry if you can hear a plane, but... As far as just still looking professional, um, I would ride in like with my, my work clothes under my gear. Uh, which was easy to do when I have on my summer mesh pants. They're really big and baggy. My Kevlar jeans, which I would wear in the winter, I would just wear them by themselves. So that's why I, during, at least when it was too cold, I would leave a pair of jeans at work and just change at work. But I would also just do my makeup once I got to work. And then the way I style my hair under my helmet is the way I style it like to sleep. When I take it all out, it actually looks like I just curled my hair instead of had it squished in the helmet under the under all day. I'll have a video coming soon about the hairstyles I use so that your helmet hair actually looks good. And actually I did that video when my hair was 10 inches longer than it is now so that should be a little more helpful I think. Now my verdict on commuting. So originally I thought I wouldn't like it but I love it. Riding my bike to work felt like I had a, like a daily shot of espresso, like I was taking a happy pill. If you feel like you need to drink coffee every day just to be in a better mood or you're just grumpy because you have to go into the office, this is the secret happy pill that is sitting in your garage. I was in such a better mood every day, like I really hate going into the office. My office is so loud, like it's like having my desk in the middle of a school cafeteria. But riding into work just put me in such a good mood. <gasps> Those were two Triumph Street Cups! Okay, I will. See you in the next one.